earlier today, ladies and gentlemen, a member of the FanDuel family, number two overall in the FedEx standings as we go in to playoffs happening in the biggest time to be a golfer and golf fan. He's right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen, legend, American, Jordan Spieth. What's up, man? Nothing. How are y'all doing? Hey, just hanging out. Congrats on the FanDuel uh, relationship. What do you got cooking over there? What do you got going on? We're doing a. We did a little um, shooting. Uh, yeah, we're out at Hamilton Farms and just kind of starting out the relationship, doing some stuff just to get started, and should be kind of fun. Should be the. I think the commercial will be pretty cool when it gets going too. Nice. Did you have to do some acting in there? Do you have any? Uh, did you do anything sweet, or is it just golfing? Yeah, no. It's yeah. There was some acting. It's more. It's more kind of like some yeah, some like cockiness, cockiness acting, like oh, um, looking at the camera while you putt, that kind of stuff. Not like normal swings. Just I think they're gonna try and get creative with it. Okay, so let's talk about that because I think you were the one to introduce this to my life. And I might be wrong thinking here, but whenever Jordan Spieth came and took over the world, all right, with his math teacher guy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, no! Just spilled something over here, but we'll get to that later. (laughs) You, I think you were the guy who looked at the hole inside like five feet or something like that whenever you, you didn't even look at the ball. Was that you? Yeah, yeah, that was me. You do that? Well, I tried. I fucking, I can never do it, Jordan. I don't know how, I don't know how, you, do you still do that? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, it just kind of depends. It's kind of a feeler for me. Uh, I did it, I did it because it, if I, I normally hit it where I was looking. So if I looked at the front edge of the hole and the center of the hole, or if it was like a right edge putt, I'd, I'd normally, it took kind of the mechanics out of it. So it was something for me that works works under pressure sometimes. How often do you change your swing or mindset going in? For instance, I'll, I'll just give you my thing. Whenever I was doing my best punting in the NFL, uh, which is similar to golf, you have to do it so much more often, and it's such a smaller, you know, it's like this. You, I don't know how you guys make contact on that regular of a basis, but every game I was almost – like, there was a new thing I was uh, right before the game thinking about. Like, okay, I'm going to hold on to it a little bit longer here. I'm going to turn it this way. Swing needs to go straight through. I was always thinking about my swing and what I was doing. And this is when I think everybody was looking up at me at this point, too. And I was still trying to continue to change it. I never rested on anything. Have you had to change your swing or your mindset or anything like that through this career? Have you stuck with the same one and it's just kind of come and gone at different uh, times of your career? Yeah, I, I think... Um, what you you kind of swing your swing and you try and get uh, you try and get precise and get outwardly focused like you would you could probably relate if you're if you're kind of in the zone you're more kind of just looking at where you want that ball to land oh yeah how you want it to spin there you kind of visualize how it's coming off your foot for us if we could be outwardly focused it's great but sometimes you know things get off and you got to do some corrections um i kind of went into a couple years where i got into some bad habits so i almost try to go back, um, look back at what I did well, why I did it well, and and then improve on that. All right, you know, where was I kind of making mistakes there? How how can I think about it to where over the next 15, 20 years I can just do minor adjustments, staying outwardly focused, um, kind of practicing like I'm playing versus focusing on mechanics, but still, you know, still trying to dial those in as best you can. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, – it's interesting to hear you say, like, hold on to it just a little bit longer. It kind of gets you set a little better or whatever. It's it. Um, it is similar, right? Because both of them can be kind of um, mechanical but also mental things to do just as, as any kicker. But um, it's it's kind of that kind of teeter-totter game you play with mechanics to try and really mostly just stay focused on visualizing that shot or that punt where you want it to land. And then the good news for us is um, – if we don't hit a good one, we don't have to worry about having to go hit somebody afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, Jordan. that was something you had to worry about if if, they, if it was returnable. Yeah, I mean, you guys got a much different world to have to deal with if you don't hit one well. You got to go deal with old Mr. Tree uh, <laughs> or uh, some water or anything like that that you have in your world. Uh, Jordan, obviously everybody saw you come into superstardom. We were so pumped, you know. Hey, we got the guy. You were the youngest champion, I think, at a, a, a multitude of places. Uh, you had massive success. You were going to be uh, like the guy. Now you're back 
here. Number two FedEx standings going into playoff weekend. Got the Ryder Cup come. How does it feel to be back at like your best game? And was there moments where you hated golf? Was there ever a moment where you hated golf and you were like, why is this happening? Why? Why? why I am a great golfer. We all know I'm a great golfer. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Was there ever those moments? And how does it feel to be, you know, on the other side of that? That's not an easy battle. Congrats on getting through it. Yeah, I think I think it was kind of word for word how you just said it. Sometimes um, <laughs> it was definitely. I mean, I was. There were definitely times where I was like, "What is happening right now?" Um, but then you got to get to the bottom of what exactly it was, and uh, I feel good. Yeah, I feel really good right now. I feel in a good place. Um, I feel like I'm improving. I but the 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 fun part about it is I actually feel like I'm not. I'm probably like, you know. 50 to 75 percent back to where i want to be so i actually feel oh. like there's a lot of upside also we're betting to on this get guy. to the freedom yeah. and comfort <laughs> level through uh, my swing my stroke um i've had you know some some i've had a good year this year but it was one where i look back and i'm like man i really should have won three four five times in the positions i was in so how do i make that to where that's the case next year how do we tighten things up a bit more so i'm actually in that i'm not in the man i'm really content phase i feel good but I feel like there's quite a bit of room for improvement, which I think is probably the best place to feel, you know? Yeah, you were fiery on the course. I think that's why I loved you so much because all the golfers for so long, and I think Tiger changed a little bit, but I like when you have an obvious competitive athlete out there, like somebody who wants to win. Like I understand top 10 is great, top five, but whenever you get mad and pissed off about, like I love it. I absolutely love it because that's my exact reactions. You just can't really hear me because <laughs> I'm not mic'd up and there's 70,000 people around. But if I don't do my job well, after all the work that I put in, I'm pissed. Like, I am actually furious. Like, hey, come on, on myself there. Have you had to learn to be nicer to yourself in rounds? Have people talked to you about, hey, you, you can't be as mad as you are? Or is it just kind of you evolving as a human? I think I'm kind of lucky in that regard where actually sometimes the more pissed off i get i actually bounce back a little bit quicker yeah because you don't want to um, feel that way again that's how i am like oh yeah. i'm gonna get mad like, I, may still yeah. be, be, I may still be walking down the next hole being like man what the fuck was that shot yeah. like, <laughs> and then michael will be like dude you gotta let it go i'm like dude i promise it's not going into this next shot i'm just pissed off that i lost, left that stroke out there now i'm gonna go get it back you know that kind of thing so some guys are like that some guys it's better to just throw it all out but um I kind of like the um, – it's just always been good for me. The only problem is, you know, now that there's a microphone next to you everywhere you are, you, well, we get fined easily if we really say what we want to say. So <laughs> we got to kind of dial it back a little bit um, sure. as what? much as you probably would rather hear the, yeah. um, you yes. know, the, un, the unedited version. Uh, it gets pretty bad after an entire season of <laughs> saying what you want to say. <laughs> hey, Jordan, grab one of those – you know, whatever. The, what are those boom things mics. called? Boom boom mic. Mic. Grab one of those boom mics and be like, hey, that was a bad fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know it. You know it. Get out of my face, dude. That is because yeah. you guys, it is very intimate with the game, the way the game is covered. I mean, we're starting and I think they're putting more mics in there, which is good because as a fan getting to learn about how and why you and Michael are having the conversation you're having. Oh, it's this far. It's that far. Oh, we're hitting it this well. We're not. That relationship has been awesome for us to watch. And I think the mics are a massive part of that. So it's good for golf, obviously terrible for your pocketbook if you have any sense of competitive edge at all. But we appreciate yeah. it. You and your caddy, I just I alluded to it earlier there, and I didn't know if it was right or not because it is – we're recording this on Monday. It's an early morning. Just got out of a bachelor party weekend with my brother. But he was your math teacher. He's, he was your teacher. He was your math teacher. Is that how that whole play – He wasn't uh, mine. He, he just taught – he taught sixth grade math up in Seattle, and oh. I met him through – Justin Thomas, a friend of mine, and he he just jumped on board because I didn't have any status. I told him I'd pay his teacher's salary and his expenses the first year if he wanted to quit teaching, and he came on the bag. So <laughs> now I wish I still paid his teacher's salary. <laughs> <laughs> How there? See now the relationship with the caddy has been something that has obviously come into conversation here late but is that something that happens not only on the course is he at practice with you as well he has to kind of know everything you're doing doesn't he or is it yeah, kind of i think you know it, it changes some guys use their caddy for swing stuff they get involved with their coaches and all that michael's not that way he's more um he's more of a situational guy he reads reads kind of he's really calm under pressure um 
you know, he's not someone where I'm like, Hey man, you know, where's that position on that swing look on the range? He's there, you know, Monday through Sunday of a tournament week, but on off weeks, he lives back in Seattle. So he's home with his family. And then we get in and, and he's just really good at putting that time in getting all the, you know, the pin locations where you can and can't miss stuff that, um, you know, I try and get down during practice rounds, but you know, we're trying to, um, we're, we're trying to get our game going and he's, he's got all that other information. Jordan, can you do this? <laughs> Go through your legs. Ah! Not in my backswing. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? I mean, that's so rude. Well, you, I was about to. You didn't get to see it. I'll do it next time. Go ahead, Ty. Jordan, with it being a Ryder Cup year, obviously you have to like stay dialed in with the playoffs coming up and everything, but is that something that you're kind of thinking about in like the back of your head? Because obviously like we've watched it the last USA! couple of years. Yeah, there's nothing USA! better. USA! Yeah. USA! That's huge. The uh, to be honest, you know, I've got the three playoff events. We got a couple weeks off in the Ryder Cup. I'd rather play better at the Ryder Cup than in the Tour Championship. Like, yeah, it's, it's come on. Hey, let's go, Jordan. Bigger it's, than yourself. It's, it's the best, man. I mean, we never get team sports, so to be able to have team sports, and then the idea that you could have that, you know, when you win a championship in team sports, you get your parade, right? Well, for us. That's the Sunday afternoon after winning a Ryder Cup on U.S. soil, where everyone sticks around and you get to, you get to kind of party with everybody. That's that's our parade. That's that's what we look forward to, um, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. But our teams, our team this year looks stacked. Um, we've we've we looked that way in the last one in Paris, and we didn't win. Um, I think we'll kind of go on go in with an underdog mentality, even though we have such massive talent on the U.S. side. I think we kind of need to go in with that kind of fire in our ass and um you know go in firing i mean early early and often <laughs> yeah hey but yeah, by the way all about it, good it, early it, and often question, fire. I mean, it's there's no there's no breaks coming up in these next six weeks we look at the Ryder cup as a major championship in our mind and and try and peak for it you got it go ahead Diggs. hey jordan i mean i think personally a good friend of yours uncle phil mickelson should potentially be a captain's pick for that Ryder cup he's got a bunch of experience uh, you could take his money during the practice rounds. What do you think about you know Phil maybe being a captain's pick for that? Well, you know he won the PGA Championship. The PGA of America runs the Ryder Cup. It's um, he obviously uh, he won one of the four biggest tournaments of the year. So I think it's going to be. I'm, I'm glad I don't have to make these decisions because of how stacked the team is. He's a little bit further down on the list. I know that, but uh, I'm not jealous of Steve Stricker and the assistants. I know they'll lean on us quite a bit. Um, but I mean, I'm going to have to make that team myself prior to, to be, being able to have much impact uh, in that, but uh, he's, so you're saying that the, Phil is, Phil's, Phil's the man. Uh, <laughs> hey, I still got to get on the team. <laughs> yeah, all right. So let's yeah. not start handing out spots anywhere else. Uh, last question here from the boys. Can't thank you enough for joining us. Jordan, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Great. Jordan. Uh, one of the things that, around golf right now that I love, and I think everyone does is the match. Have you reached out yet to Steph Curry to play maybe the next one, get, uh, Bryson and Rogers, try and go for their crown or no? I we haven't yet, but I'm op certainly open to it. Uh, that Let's, last one looked amazing. Where was it? Big Sky, Montana. Yeah. You get guys yeah. just you know at eight thousand feet just sending balls up in the air. They never come out of the sky. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I also you know it'd be kind of fun to actually go out and and talk shit and announce it, like to be the on course guy too. If I didn't, you know, that might oh. even be more fun than playing in it. Um, but I guess Pat would probably be better at doing that. If no, 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 no. They, they won't have me there, Jordan. No, they will not. That is, I would be excited to see you out there, though. Uh, when you see the, is there any courses that, like, have you played that course? I just assume you're. Uh, I went there in the summertime with my dad and brother. We actually went fly fishing up there, but I never, I didn't play any golf. Um, but we, we went on a little fishing trip like a few years ago, but it, yeah, it looked amazing. What are you, just super outdoors guy? You, you fly fish? I, no, I this I hadn't gone on a fishing trip before or since, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, big Texas that, guy. That's yeah. the only time I was in that area. Oh, that's awesome. I thought you were going to be the fly fishing <laughs> golfer. And I said it was like, yeah, I just heard it was fun. Turns out, a lot of, that's not a <laughs> you're, hey, there you hey, man, A lot of similarities, yeah. A lot of similarities in the motion. 
No, I, I have no idea. I, got, I, I spent more time untangling my line than I did catching the line. That's what I was saying, yeah, because I think there's a lot yeah. of yeah, there's a lot of shit that happens with that. Uh, can't that do it? Out of beer and watch them fish. Yeah, <laughs> sit in the water, yeah, watch them. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Congrats on the FanDuel deal. Excited you're representing the number one sports book in America.